Hello, and welcome back to 207 Aikido. We promised a while back um, some Kodagaishi tricks, and um, rather than one, now we've got three for you tonight. Um, so we'll start off at the beginning of the story. It was a two-person class, it was Chad and I, and we wanted to play with Kodagaishi getting connected when Uke is resisting. The thought being that um, if Uke resists and I can't turn his wrist over, there is something for me to connect to. So I was trying to figure out how can I connect to Uke to move him um, when he's resisting. And the first thing we did, this is a type of resistance that it turns out um, you're not going to necessarily see a lot. This is the type of resistance that my brother does when I'm trying to do Kodagaishi on him and he doesn't want me to do it. This sort of thing. It's not aggressive, but it is fully resisting. So if they're resisting in like this, it's quite easy. I'm going to put my hand here and I'm going to imagine um, a spindle going along the axis of Eric's grip. And I'm just going to rotate on that spindle here. And that allows me to break the wrist, not break the wrist, but break the plane of the wrist. And then it's basically a sumiyotoshi here. I'm going to drop down there. So again, if they resist in, you just Go with the fingers here, and then drop there. Okay, we should keep this short, so let's, <laughs> let's move on to the next one. Okay, so Eric came to class, and he resisted in a much more logical way, which all of us do in randori, which is out. So here, I'll, I'll uh, resist out. Yeah, so we found that if you're, if you're resisting outwardly, there's a slight motion almost backwards with your energy to try and keep your wrist straight, especially if you apply force. Trying to push it forward, I feel force from him pushing it back towards me. So I can take that force and actually bend his wrist slightly backwards. And at that point, I am at the extent of the flexibility of his wrist. Without getting into his power zone, which is right in the middle, I can rotate his wrist around that middle spot and bring it to Kodagaish. So you're always at a spot where he can't resist very well. So if I'm here, I can actually pretty easily bring the wrist down, extend it through the whole range of motion, and around to Kodagaish. And this still requires a little bit of kind of strength to move his, his wrist around, but you're staying out of his power zone in order to do that. And it's just like an arm, when you're moving an arm around to do sumiyotoshi or something, you never want to bring it back in inside the plane of his body. This is his power zone. I want to keep it extended out and work kind of at the extent of its motion. You're doing that with the wrist. Full extent of motion and around. But as we were doing this, we found that there were some, some easier ways to do this where you didn't have to fight, fight all of his resisting as you're going around. Even though it's a lot easier not in his power zone, there's a different way to do it. Uh, okay, so here's our third trick. I think I was working with Chad again, was that if I, I was trying to feel the connection like we were feeling with the Nikyo drill. And if Eric's resisting here, and I, I sort of use both hands, and I try to find the connection in his shoulder. And once I've found that connection, then I know the path along which Eric is resisting. The harder Eric resists, the narrower that path is. And then once I've found it exactly, then it's just a matter of keeping my arm parallel so that I can move around it. I don't want to cross my path. If Eric is resisting along a path here, I only want to move around it. If I bump into it or cross it at all, it gives Eric something to fight. But if I can find that path and then move around it, and I actually did cross it a little bit there. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to connect with Eric, find that point around which he's rotating, and then I really, I want to only be moving around. So I'm here, and then, So as you can see, um, 
we've got some more kinks to work out, but I'd like to let Eric speak about this as well, because he's um, got some good insights, I think. So as we were playing with this, the idea of feeling that linear resistance from Uke, he's going to resist in a linear fashion, even though he's coming through a curved arm, there's one direction at which he's pushing. And you can actually affect what that direction is by, if I give him a little resistance in this way, he's going to angle his resistance back this way. So it's the max sum of all the vectors of his resistance that creates a single large vector, and that's what you don't want to fight. You want to work around it. And as we were playing with this, I realized that this might be the key to some other techniques that we do, such as creating tension in the arm and then dropping out and allowing Uge to fall. In that sort of technique, it's the same feeling of creating that tension, feeling his, his energy, and as he comes down, I always thought that this was kind of a release and then allowing the energy and kind of following his energy and redirecting it. Now I think there's a slightly different element in there. If I try and redirect his energy, I am pushing his energy and giving him something to fight rather than releasing it and then working in a circle around his energy but allowing him to have all say in the forward and back realm. I can have say in the spiral realm and that's what's going to apply this rotational energy and allow him to fall backwards. So here I can build up tension by giving him something to resist, pushing up against him a little bit releasing for the throw. It just feels so much better. And I don't know why we haven't gotten to this before, but it's quite a revelation. And I think we're, we're due for a lot of experimentation and other techniques playing with this, this idea of finding that vector of resistance, working around it, and releasing all tension within that vector of resistance, and just applying little bits of energy on the outskirts. Yeah, so it's really exciting. It's going to be a whole lot more um, that we're going to do with this, but I think we've got, we've got plenty for now. There's, there's lots more to work on.